SABC News celebrates Women's Month. Well, women have advanced in the workplace in recent decades, but the struggle for equality, equal opportunity and much more continues. And of course, research shows that men continue to earn more than women for the very same work. So let's look at some strategies now that women need to employ to accelerate their careers and close the gender gap. To discuss, we're joined by career coach Vumi Msweli. Ms. Msweli, thank you for, for being with us. We're both working on Women's Day. I don't know if that's a, a good thing or bad thing in terms of empowerment. <laughs> I think our predecessors would be happy that we're that, working that's on That's true, stage. that's true. We have this choice. How, how would you describe the status currently enjoyed or not enjoyed by women in the workplace? So I think there's been a great amount of traction happening in the lower tranches. So if you're looking at things like, you know, middle management, junior management, we definitely have really made some headway. Unfortunately, when you start getting to the C-suite, the executive levels, we aren't where we need to be. There is very few women actually in those levels. And furthermore, the women who are there aren't necessarily making as much as their male counterparts. So men obviously need to be part of the change, but there's also research that says women are, are reluctant to ask for better pay, uh, presumably for better positions as, as well. And a recent study on South African women in business uh, found that women struggle to speak up to higher managers. 55% it was uh, found have little or no confidence in being able to address uh, issues. So, so to some extent, would you agree women are holding themselves back? So I definitely think that as women, we could learn a thing or two from our male counterparts. Obviously, the entire structure is designed by men, which will generally tend to serve them. But as women, what can we learn from our male counterparts? The first thing I always say to all my coaching clients is usually a man will see an opportunity, a, a job per se, and say, actually, I mean, 40 to 60 percent of the criteria let me go ahead and in essence apply for the role the female counterpart will say oh i meet 80 i'm not sure if i qualify so the first step is be bold apply for the job even if you think you don't meet a hundred percent of the criteria the second is learn from our male counterparts they leverage various tools they use sponsorship having people advocate for them in the boardroom they use mentorship really learning from the predecessors. There's some fantastic opportunities currently for women. I know the mentorship boardroom is happening during this month of August, which any woman can sign up for, but get a mentor. Thirdly, men are not afraid to get coaches. Whilst our female counterparts are like, oh, I'm not sure I really need someone. My work will speak for itself. Unfortunately, your work does not speak for itself. You speak for yourself. Yeah. So, so great advice. Uh, here's a question. Should that mentor uh, be a woman? That's a very good question. I am equal opportunity when it comes to mentorship. <laughs> who is the best person for the job? Who is the person who can help guide me in essence to get to where it is that they're wanting to be? I have male mentors as well as female mentors. And I think having diversity within your mentor mentors really, really helps you think and be the best version of yourself. Hiring someone just because they're a woman to be your mentor won't suffice. Hiring someone just because they're a man won't suffice. Right. The person who can help guide you in your journey is the best person for the job specifically when it comes to coaching and mentorship. So women who want to get ahead, um, it's, it's often uh, noticed that they work in an environment where women are often perceived differently and, and that has an impact. So a woman will assert her rights and she's pushy, um, whereas a male will be seen as assertive uh, as, as he is. Uh, any advice for, for navigating those uh, perceptional issues? Definitely. So perception management is something we all have to really deal with. You're right. If you are an assertive, strong woman, you're bossy and pushy. Your male counterparts don't have to do that. However, there's also perception of when you get into the C-suite, you have to throw your femininity out the window. They wouldn't have hired you for your different perspective if what in essence you're doing is having to get rid of your femininity in essence. I believe in wear your lipstick, be who you are authentically. If you're an assertive person, be an assertive person, but still bring that nurturing 
and caring side that is authentic to your character. Yeah. You being a woman should be a value add, not something that really deters you from effectively executing your role. But of course, you know, we've seen some fantastic examples in some Scandinavian countries. We see in Rwanda as well that the more women that are being brought into the table to make decisions, the better they are faring economically, in business, and in all spheres of life. So bringing that feminine energy is key in order for us to transmute the energy. Yeah. You know, I think our men have tried quite hard, but uh, let's be honest, I think a woman can definitely do a job a little bit better at times. <laughs> so, so I mean, I don't know. I, I've worked in environments where women are, are uh, in most of the top leadership positions. Um, mm. and, and here at the SABC, there are a lot of women leaders. Is that an old issue? Um, have women got over that, that whole thing of trying to be like a man? You'll be very, very surprised. So if I'm speaking to some of my clients in the engineering and mining space, they still feel the pressure to arrive in a more masculine energy. I think also we, we still have some what we perceive to be typically female roles. Oh, marketing and HR, those are for the ladies. So we expect women to rock up as women there. But in other roles where we expect women to say, actually, no, this person's head of strategy, they must be a little bit more masculine in how they show up. So I do think at times it is role and discipline specific. But I think despite it all, I remember um, coaching a couple of ladies, interestingly enough, who work in a mine. And I challenged them to say, why aren't you wearing your lipstick? Just because you're in gumboots doesn't mean you have to throw out your femininity. The perspective with which you come from, from your background, your gender, your sexual orientation, your race is the value that you bring to this organization over and above your expertise. Yeah. It's the frame of reference that you can bring in that gives a completely new solution, specifically in a world where the challenges are we're facing we've never faced before. We need more people from diverse perspectives to contribute to finding solutions. So being those kind of people who can, in essence, bring a different perspective is very, very key as women. And diverse boards do uh, better. There, there is research around that. A, a word that's often being used in analysis uh, currently is microaggression. Uh, black people, mm. women face sort of sub subtle little things that happen every day. Um, can you give us some examples? And, and what do you do? Do you start pushing back uh, about those little issues? Definitely. One of the things that most of my corporate clients will, in essence, complain a little bit about regarding microaggressions is we start a meeting automatically because I'm a woman, they're going to expect me to take the minutes. So I say you have two options there. Take the minutes for the first meeting and then pass the buck and say, Mr. Smith, will you take the minutes? I did them last week. Or alternatively, steer the meeting from the very beginning to say, guys, I took the meeting, I took the minutes last week. Uh, this is what I think we should be doing and taking control. Do not, when we are walking into a meeting, automatically be the first person to be like, guys, anyone for some tea? Because when the, those microaggressions happen to say, Vumia, are you not going to serve as tea? You automatically like, they really shouldn't be liaising or speaking to me in this kind of manner. But people, and I often say, you know, one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou says, when people know better, they do better. So it's very important that even with microaggressions, we are educating because the next time someone opens their mouth to, you know, really transgress against another, if you've disciplined them once, they will think twice before doing it. All right. Uh, thank you for so wonderful. Sometimes, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Ms. Mzweli, we, we lost you there for a second, so I thought you had finished. Uh, but we do have to end there. But I was saying thank you for the wonderful advice. That was career coach Vumi Mzweli.